Good day, teachers. Our topic today is item analysis and standard deviation. When I was a classroom teacher, we are required to do item analysis. We compute how many get the correct answer for each item of our predical test. I don't know what is the importance of doing it, but I just did it. What is important to me is the MPS because it is submitted to the division office, which I don't know also how they interpret it. That is the reason why I am sharing this to you so that you may find the value of doing item analysis and importance of standard deviation as a classroom teacher. Let us define first what is item analysis. Item analysis is one way of examining students' answer in every test item to determine the quality of question and the whole assessment. It can be used by the teacher as basis for his or her instructional decision such as changing, improving, or retaining a certain test item. It can be used also to determine whether a certain competency has been mastered by the students or not. In item analysis, we determine the difficulty level of the test, index of discrimination, percentage of correct responses, and the standard deviation, and we will discuss them one by one. As what I have said, item analysis is important to teachers. First, test questions will be improved, particularly questions with discrimination index of poor and needs improvement. Next, ambiguous questions will be eliminated and of course enhance teachers' competence in crafting tests. And finally, it will also tell teachers to either change or improve teaching strategy and in what competency should he or she conduct remediation. Let us talk first item discrimination. Here, we are computing the index of discrimination. The index of discrimination ranges from negative 1 to positive 1. Item discrimination or index of discrimination is computed to determine how a certain question separates the more able students or fast learners from the slow learners. If the index of discrimination is negative 1, it means that the slow learners outperform the fast learners in a certain test item, though it happens but we are not expecting of this situation. It shows that there is something wrong in the question. The question may be ambiguous, thus it needs to be changed or improved. On the other hand, if the discrimination value is positive 1, fast learners outperform slow learners. For you to better understand what I am saying, I will show you the table of index of discrimination. Here, I categorize the index of discrimination into four, excellent, good, fair, and poor. If the index of discrimination is 0 0.19 and below, the test item is poor and needs to be eliminated. If the index of discrimination is 0 0.20 to 0 0.29, the test item is fair and needs to be revised. The test item is good if it has an index of discrimination of 0 0.30 to 0 0.39. Test items belong to this category needs improvement. While excellent test items must be retained, it has an index of discrimination of 0 0.40 and above. Instructional decision using index of discrimination is not yet final. Difficulty index should also be used alongside with the discrimination index. There are questions that are excellent yet too easy or too difficult to students and must be revised, discarded, or improved. How to get the value or index of discrimination? First, arrange the named students according to their score, from highest to lowest. Next, group the students into two, upper group and lower group. Some books or references may teach you to divide the students into three groups, which is also correct. In my case, I suggest only two groups, 50% for the upper group and the remaining 50% for the lower group. Finally, Count the number of students who got the correct answer in a particular test item in upper group. Do the same with the lower group. Let me show you a sample on how to compute for the discrimination index. Refer to the table. The first column is the item number, but I prefer to use the code number so that I will know what is that item all about. The code number can be found in the curriculum guide. The second column is for the correct responses of the upper group and next is, the, is for the lower group. In our sample, there are 12 students who took the test, 6 students in the upper group and 6 students for the lower group. To compute for the discrimination index, simply 
subtract the number of students who got the correct answer from the students who got the correct answer in the upper group. Then divide the result by the number of students in the upper and lower group. In our case, there are 6 in each group. Thus, we use 6. For your instructional decision, items with index of discrimination of 0 0.19 and below, meaning 0 0.19 and with negative, are poorly crafted and should be discarded. On the other hand, items with 0 0.40 and positive 1 are excellent questions and must be retained. Index of discrimination also tells not only to change or improve the question, but also to change the teaching style of the teacher. The index of difficulty is a way of determining the certainty that the students could answer the test item or question correctly. The value of index of difficulty starts from 0 to 1. The difficult question is a value nearer to 0, while the easy one is near to 1. The table shows comprehensively what I am talking just a while. When the index of difficulty is 0 and 1, the test item is very difficult and very easy respectively and must be discarded. On the other hand, 0 0.26 to 0 0.75 index of difficulty is right difficulty index and must be retained. There are times when the test item is excellent in terms of index of discrimination but the level of difficulty is very easy. Excellent yet very easy question must be revised or discarded. Using our table of index of discrimination, item number 1 is very easy and must be discarded. In terms of index of discrimination, it is poor and must be discarded also. Items number 2 to 5 have right difficulty. It means that the student could possibly answer these questions correctly. In terms of difficulty, this must be retained aside from item number 5, which should be improved. So, as a teacher, using the data at hand, you must examine item number 1 and 5 and come up with a new question. Computing for the percentage of correct responses is almost the same with the index of difficulty. In percentage of correct responses, you just multiply it by 100. The importance of getting or knowing the percentage of correct responses is that you will know the mastery level of your class to a particular competency. It will tell you in which particular competency should you conduct remediation to your class. The formula in finding or computing the percentage of correct responses is divide the number of correct responses with the total number of students who took the test then multiply it by 100. To determine your instructional decision using the percentage of correct responses, just look at the table. This table of values is taken from the National Educational Testing and Research Center of the Department of Education. Test items with percentage of correct responses 65 and below are considered least mastered. Teacher should provide remediation on these competencies. When I was a classroom teacher, I don't mind computing the standard deviation. I do not know what it means and how it could help me as a teacher. As defined, standard deviation is a measurement of the difference and scattering of set of variables. Computing or knowing the standard deviation is important to us as teachers. The standard deviation will tell you the gap of learning between the fast and slow learners. The higher the value of the standard deviation, the greater the gap of learning between the fast and slow learners. On the other hand, the smaller the value of the standard deviation, the bigger the chances or possibility that both slow and fast learners understand or learn the lesson almost the same. If the standard deviation is high, the teacher should think of a teaching strategy that would make slow and fast learners grasp the lesson equally or the same. Although there is a formula in computing the standard deviation, here is a simple way of computing the standard deviation that even the elementary school teachers could follow. First, get the correct responses per item. Determine the mean by simply adding the correct responses and divide it by the number of item. In this case, the total number of correct responses is 23. When it will be divided by 6 as the total number of items, the result is 3.83.
In the third column, simply subtract the mean from the correct response per item. Then multiply the result by itself as shown in the fourth column. Add the result in the fourth column and get the mean. And finally, get the square root of the mean. The standard deviation of 1.34 shows that the scores of the students are scattered 1.34 above the mean and 1.34 below the mean. I have a copy of automated item analysis that highlights the index of discrimination, index of difficulty, percentage of correct responses, and standard deviation. This automated item analysis was developed by Ryan J. Bastillador, a secondary mathematics teacher at Armin Rios Marine National High School in the province of Romlon. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something from our discussion today.